Hello everyone and welcome to Homestead for a Living. I wanted to do a bit of a follow-up video slash stream of consciousness about um, the same topic I did a video a couple of days ago about, which is the fertilizer shortage. And I mentioned in that how my hay supplier had had their fertilizer prices double and how many others around the country are seeing uh, quadrupling prices. And of course, they're still going up. And in the comments, there was a lot of folks talking about how, um, making comments about how you know, this is not necessarily a bad thing and, and uh, we shouldn't be relying on chemical fertilizers and it shouldn't be an issue kind of for regenerative farmers or permaculture people. And they are correct. However, the reality of the situation is a little bit different. Now on this property, we are doing as much as we can to produce our own fertilization. We don't buy any chemical fertilizers on this property. We don't bring any fertilizer, even organic fertilizers. This is the fertilizer we use. We make our own compost. Um, we bring in wood chip or uh, sawdust from a local sawmill that I buy for $20 for truckload, some nice fine stuff. And then our chickens and our rabbits do a great job of providing us with the nitrogen we need to make that compost pile happen and to make it start producing. And then that's applied to our vegetables or whatever else we're growing. So our farm does not rely on fertilizer. However, I do buy hay for my animals and I do buy grain for my animals. While we're working on making our systems more self-contained so that we can provide all of their food, the reality is it takes a long time and it's very difficult to really completely feed all of your animals from a piece of property. We are on a five acre site here, but realistically we're on about a one acre site. The rest is very steep holler and forest. Um, and it's better growing timber than anything else. We don't really want to attempt to, to grow a lot of human food or animal feed down there. Um, but we have about an acre we're working with and to feed a significant flock of these ducks or chickens is quite an endeavor. And we are working hard on that. We plant a lot of things for these animals. For example, we have comfrey growing right here. They love comfrey. And we have clover here. They're eating on the clover right now. Good high protein food. The rabbits love those sumacs. There's all kinds of food for them. And every day we're adding more food for them. But the reality is I'm still pumping grain into these animals. It takes a lot of grain a lot of hay for my rabbits and those things require fertilizer to grow and sell because every time you sell a hay bale or a chicken or a carrot or any kind of food with it goes the fertility that fed it so if you had x amount of fertility on your land coming from fertilizers or manures or composts that plant or that animal took those nutrients into their body and then you sent that away you sold it and you sent it off your property and you're not getting that fertility back unless you sell it to somebody and they their waste goes back onto your land. And so if I'm, so my suppliers of hay and grain certainly rely on fertilizer. They cannot continue. The hay field that I buy from, they're or, they are organic. They don't um, use anything nasty on the land. But the reality is every time they say out, sell a hay bale, they lost nutrients from their soil and they have to replace them with some kind of fertilizer. And so, we really can't say that we're immune from these fertilizer shortages and, and skyrocketing costs unless you or I am completely self-contained. As long as I'm not buying any kind of animal feed for my animals and as long as I'm not buying any kind of food for myself, including grains, dairy, meat, spices, um, anything like that, flour. Um, if I can truly say that, then yes, the fertilizer shortages do not affect me. Although the... Uh, disintegrating social cohesion that's going to result from it will affect me. But anyway, all that aside, Gabby and I have been at this for years and we are working around the clock to become self-sufficient and we are still not there. It's very, very difficult to completely provide all of your food, truly all of the food to feed a family from a small acreage. Um, if we had a lot of pasture, that would be one thing. But if you think about just grains, the amount of work to harvest grains by hand is insane for the amount of grains that we eat. All this to say, like I said, it's kind of a stream of consciousness. I'm not self-sufficient yet, and we're working hard to become self-sufficient, and I highly doubt very many people watching this video are self-sufficient. So first of all, it's a call for us all to quickly run towards self-sufficiency as quickly as we can, and as strategically as we can, but also we need to be realistic and realize that the fertilizer shortages do affect us. The shortages in things like soy affect us. Even though we don't want to eat soy, when that food goes away, the market's gonna absorb other food sources. Even if you're buying all your food from an organic farm that doesn't use any kind of inputs, if they're somehow completely self-contained, more people will be buying their food and that's still gonna affect your supply. So we're not immune and that means we do need to start thinking about solutions really quickly. 
the solution obviously for Gabby and I is we're trying to get self-sufficient and self-contained as possible, but we're also trying to tap into alternative streams of organic matter to start replacing that on our land, to start replacing the need for ex external fertility. Again, the sawdust is a good example of that. We bring that in from a local sawmill. Um, there's a lot of places you can find organic matter around you. You can reach out to landscapers and get grass clippings and leaves. You can drive around neighborhoods and urban areas and get bags of leaves. You can bring in wood chips. You can bring in hay. You can bring in sawdust, bark dust, um, anything organic. And really that's a good prep is to just stack fertility, stack organic matter on your land. It can be turned into compost and it can be turned into mulch and it can generate food for you and for your animals. But also we're, we're trying to look at other solutions as well. Gabby and I have been working at creating a product, um, basically an organic fertilizer that can be shipped um, in a lightweight form, more suited towards small scale ag, small market garden and homestead level stuff. Um, but we are trying to create solutions there as well and then coordinate in our community between the manure producers and for example, the hay producers, you know, how can we replace those chemical fertilizers with perhaps the manure that's being underutilized by a local chicken farm or a local uh, cattle operation or something like that. So we're trying to make those connections and make those solutions. But it would be foolhardy for any of us to think that we are immune simply because we believe in regenerative agriculture. If we're still eating anything that comes from commercial agriculture that relies on fertilizers, we're gonna feel the impacts of this. And this isn't a call to be afraid or stressed out about it. It's a call to create solutions. And again, sprint towards self-sufficiency as quickly as possible. So hopefully that's a, a useful stream of consciousness there, y'all. In the meantime, everybody stay safe, be well, and happy homesteading.